in February 2024. NIST released version 2.0 of the cybersecurity framework, and almost everyone who wrote about it focused on the wrong thing. They talked about the new sixth function. They discussed the expanded guidance. They analyzed the updated and implementation tiers, but they completely missed the one change that actually matters if you're trying to break into cybersecurity. A change so significant that if you understand it, you will sound smarter in interviews than candidate with three years of experience. Look, I've watched job seekers memorize the five NIST functions, practice reciting them in interviews, and they still get rejected. Why? Because they sound like everyone else who memorized the same thing. And now with version 2.0, there's a new understanding that separate people who actually get what NIST CSF is for from people who just memorize definitions. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the one critical change in NIST CSF 2.0 that changes how you should talk about this framework in interviews. And I will explain why most people completely misunderstand what this framework does. And I will give you the exact language that makes you sound like someone who actually gets it. Okay. I'm told by Michael, a cybersecurity expert and career coach. If you want to stand out in GRC interviews, instead of sounding like everyone else, hit that subscribe button right now. Now, let's start with what everyone gets wrong about NIST CSF from day one. When most people learn about NIST CSF, they are taught it's a framework with five or six functions that you implement in your organization. They memorize identity, protect, detect, respond, recover. Now there is govern. They learn about categories and subcategories. They understand it's widely used, right? They know it's voluntary and they think that they understand NIST, but they don't. Now here's what they missed. NIST CSF is not a list of things you implement. It's a language for talking about cybersecurity risk in business terms. You see, think about what that actually means. NIST CSF was created to help organizations answer three fundamental questions, okay? What cybersecurity outcomes are we trying to achieve? Where are we now relative to those outcomes? How do we prioritize improvement based on our actual business risks? Okay, but most people applying for GRC jobs think it's a checklist. They think companies implement NCSF by going through each function and subcategory and checking boxes. Wrong completely. Companies use NIST CSF as a common language. When the CISO talks to the board, when security teams talk to the business teams, when vendors talk to customers about security, NIST CSF gives everyone a shared vocabulary. Now, here's how you know someone doesn't understand this. They talk about being NIST CSF compliant or implementing 100% of NIST CSF. Those phrases are meaningless. You can't be compliant with NIST CSF. It's not a compliance standard. It's a risk management framework. Okay. This is the fundamental difference between candidates who get hired and candidates who get rejected. See, the ones who get hired understand NIST CSF is a tool for risk communication, not a compliance checklist. And version 2.0 makes this even more explicit. NIST CSF 2.0 introduced governance as the sixth core function. Everyone talks about this. You need to know it, okay? But that's not the change that matters most for your career. The real change is buried in how NIST restructured the entire framework around something called organizational context. You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be, stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching. Something structured, practical, and focused on real action. It's called the Five Day Cybersecurity Job Challenge. This isn't just content you binge and forget. We're talking hands on learning, real skills, and daily guidance. Two hours a day for five days. It's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q&As where I personally help you avoid mistakes 
and learn the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you are ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step. Version 2.0 explicitly says you must customize this framework to your specific organization before you use it, not just your industry. Your specific business model, risk tolerance, regulatory environment, and threats. NIST literally says the framework is not a one size fits all approach to managing cybersecurity risk. They have always implied this, but in version 2.0, they made it mandatory. You can't just start mapping controls to the framework, you have to establish organizational context first. Now, here's what this means for you in interviews. When they ask about NIST CSF, most candidates say NIST CSF has its functions govern, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. It helps organizations manage cybersecurity risk, and that's correct. That is boring. Okay, that's what everyone else says. The candidates who get hired, this is what they say NIST CSF is a risk communication framework that requires organizations to establish their specific context before implementation. Version 2.0 made this explicit by requiring you to define your business model, critical assets, threat environment, and risk tolerance before you start using the framework. Two companies in the same industry should have completely different implementation based on their specific risk. See? You see the difference? The second answer shows you actually understand what the framework is for and how it is used in real organizations. This understanding separates you from people who just memorize definitions. Now let me show you why this matters in practical terms. When you are in a GRC interview, they are not just testing if you know what NIST CSF is. They are testing if you understand how to actually use it. Now here is a common interview scenario. I want you to understand this. The interviewer asks, how would you help our company implement NIST CSF? The wrong answer is this. I would map our existing controls to the NIST CSF categories and subcategories, identify gaps, and create a plan to implement these controls. See, this answer sounds good, but it shows you think NIST CSF is a checklist. Now, here's the better way to answer it. I will start by understanding your business model, critical asset, and primary threat. Then I would use NIST CSF to identify which outcomes matter most for your specific risk. For example, if you're a SaaS company, your critical asset is probably your application and customer data. So we will prioritize outcomes around access control, data protection, and availability. If you're a traditional retailer, payment security and physical security might be more critical. The framework helps us articulate what we need to achieve, not prescribe exactly how to achieve it. This answer shows you understand risk-based thinking. That is what GRC rules require. Okay? Now here's another scenario. Interviewer asks you, what's the difference between NIST CSF and ISO 27001? And here is the wrong answer. NIST CSF is a US-based and voluntary. ISO 27001 is international and you can get certified. It is true, but incomplete. Here's a better way to answer it. NIST CSF is a high-level framework focused on outcomes and risk communication. It describes what you should achieve but not how. ISO 27001 is more prescriptive with specific control requirements that you must implement to get certified. Many organizations use both. NIST CSF for overall risk management and communication, ISO 27001 for detailed control, implementation, and certification. They are complementary, not competing. You see, this shows nuanced understanding. Here is why this matters so much. GRC roles require you to work with different stakeholders, technical teams, business teams, executives, customers. Your job is translating between these groups. NIST CSF is your translation tool. If you understand it's a communication framework, you understand the job. If you think it's a compliance checklist, you don't. Now, let me give you the exact language that works in GRC interviews. When they ask about NIST CSF, right? Here's your framework. Start with NIST CSF is a voluntary risk management framework that provides a common language for discussing cybersecurity across different stakeholders. Then explain the six functions. It's organized into six core functions govern, which is new in version 
focuses on establishing organizational context and governance. Identify is about understanding your asset and risk. Protect is implementing safeguards. Detect is monitoring for events. Respond is reacting to incident. Recover is restoring capabilities. Then show how you understand application. Okay, in this context, what makes version 2.0 important is the explicit emphasis on customization. Organizations need to establish their specific context before applying the framework. Two companies in the same industry might prioritize completely different outcomes based on their business models and risk profiles. Finally, connect to business. Now, the real value is using it as a communication tool. Okay, When you tell an executive, we need better incident response, that's big. But when you say we are currently at tier 2 for the response function and need to reach tier 3 to manage ransomware risk, that is specific and business focused. You see, this four part answer takes about 90 seconds. It shows you understand what NCSF is, how it's structured, how it's applied, and why it matters to business. That's the level of understanding that gets you hired. If your learning needs CSF to break into GRC, here is what you should do. First, read the actual NIST CSF 2.0 document, not a summary, the actual framework. It's free on the NIST website. Read the introduction and the govern function section. That is where organizational context is explained. This takes about 30 minutes. Most candidates never do this. They just read blog summaries. You know, reading source material puts you ahead, right? Second, practicing explaining this CSF in your own words, not memorizing definitions. Explaining it like you're talking to a friend. Can you explain what organizational context means? Can you explain why customization matters? Can you give examples of how different companies will prioritize differently? You see, practice this out loud. You record yourself. If you sound like you're reciting memorized definitions, practice more until you sound natural. Then third, build a simple example showing you understand the application. Pick a company type, maybe a small online store. Write down what their critical assets are, what their main risk might be and which NIST CSF outcomes would matter most for them. This exercise proves you understand risk-based thinking, okay? Now bring this example to interviews. When they ask about NIST CSF, you can say, I can show you how I would apply it to a specific business if it helps. Fourth, connect NIST CSF to your portfolio work. Now, if you built a risk register, explain how it aligns with identify functions. If you wrote policies, Connect them to govern and protect functions. Show how your project demonstrates understanding of framework outcomes, okay? And fifth, learn the differences between NIST CSF, ISO 27001, and SOC 2. See, interviewers love asking about frameworks. Know how they relate, how they differ, and how they are used together. The candidate who understand NIST 2.0 at this level doesn't sound like a beginner. No, they sound like someone who is ready to do the actual GRC work. The bottom line is this, NIST CSF 2.0 isn't just adding a six function, it's making explicit what was always true. This is a risk management and communication framework, not a compliance checklist. Organizations that understand this use CSF effectively. Organizations that don't, they waste time checking boxes while their security doesn't actually improve. Job candidates who understand this as well, they get hired. Candidates who just memorize the six functions, they sound like everyone else. The one change no one told you about is not govern, is the fundamental emphasis on customization and risk-based implementation that separate people who actually understand cybersecurity from people who memorized definitions. Now you know. Use this understanding, okay? Is the difference between sounding like every other candidate and sounding like someone who actually get it. Now, if this changed how you think about NIST CSF and how to talk about it in interviews, subscribe for more content that prepares you for real interviews, not just theory. And in my usual manner, I hope I'm leaving you today better than I met you. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.